So now we're going to use this knowledge of least common multiples and try working on problems that we couldn't do before. And that's how mathematics is all cumulative. So you encountered problems before that you couldn't solve, and now with new tools, you can. What tool is that that's least common multiple? Let's see how we're going to use that. Remember, to add fractions, we know now for a long time what? We have to make common denominator. If we make least common multiple as our common denominator, it will help us because then we don't have very large numbers to work with in the numerator. So in the for my eyes only column, I would recommend very strongly for all these problems to write for my eyes only, do the work here for finding least common multiple, then come back here. So that the writing here is all neat and clean mathematically. You can also write additional notes here if you got stuck on something. So we need to know what is least common multiple of 2 squared, 3 squared times 5, and 2 cubed times 3 squared times 7. So we're going to do exactly what we did before. So for least common multiple, we need between 2 squared and 2 to the third, we keep 2 to the third. Between 3 squared and 3 squared, we keep one of the 3 squares. We need a 5 and we need a 7. OK, so our least common multiple is 2 cubed times 3 squared times 5 times 7. That is our common, least common multiple that we're going to need here. All right, so here's what we have. We have 2 squared times 3 squared times 5, but we want 2 cubed times 3 squared times 5 times 7. Whatever is missing here from these factors, we need to multiply top and bottom by, because then we'll have a common denominator. So let's see, we need 2 to the third. We're at 2 to the third means 2 times 2 times 2 three times. Here we have 2 squared. We have two twos. So we need one extra 2, and then we also are missing a 7. We have the 3 squared and the 5. All right, let's try see if you can figure out what to multiply here. 2 cubed we have, 3 squared we have, 7 we have. So the only thing missing here is 5. So here we have to multiply top and bottom by 2 times 7. Here we have to multiply just by the 5. This makes both of these denominators the same. All right, so now multiply the top here will give you what? 1 times 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 times 5, which is 5. So we're going to have 19 over whatever this number is. OK, look very carefully at every single step to make sure you really understand what's happening. We took this common, least common multiple, made sure we both have the least common multiple in the denominators. If there are missing terms, you have to multiply numerator, denominator of each fraction by respective terms so that they both have common denominator. Remember the word least common multiple. That's what common denominator really means. Common denominator does not mean you're just looking for what's common between them. You're really looking to make both denominators the same. And that's why we're choosing least common multiple. We already saw before that you can choose any multiple, except that if you choose least common multiple, you have smaller numbers to work with. OK, so just remember that. Sometimes people confuse the words. They think common denominator means you're looking for what's common. But what you're really looking for is a common multiple. So don't just say common denominator. It's better to say you want to make least common multiple as your common denominator. All right, let's take a look at this. Again, same thing. Write the two terms here. Find the least common multiple. So let's try again. We have 3 to the 6, no 3 here, so we keep 3 to the 6. 5 to the 10 and 5 to the 3rd, so we're going to keep 5 to the 10. 7 to the 3rd, 7 to the 12, so we're going to keep 7 to the 12. And let's see, that's all taken care of. Here, 2 to the 8, there is no 2 here, so we're going to need 2 to the 8. So our least common multiple is going to be 2 to the 8, 3 to the 6, 5 to the 10, 7 to the 12. So we need eight twos in the denominator. 
Here, none of the twos are there, so we're going to need two to the eight. We have seven to the third, whereas we have seven to the twelve, so we need nine more sevens. So two to the eight and seven to the nine is what we need. Here we have two to the eight and seven to the nine on numerator as well. If you multiply denominator by something, denominator and numerator have to be multiplied by the same quantity. So then we have equivalent fraction. All right, let's see if you can figure out what to multiply this denominator by. 2 to the 8 is already there. We have 5 to the 3rd, but we need 5 to the 10. So we need 5 to the 7, 7 more 5s. We need 3 to the 6 because that was completely missing. 7 to the 12 is already there, so nothing there. So 3 to the 6 times 5 to the 7 is what we need. And then you can leave your answer right there. It's too big of a number for you to multiply, so just leave it. For now, that's all we want you to do. We are just trying to see if you can make least common multiple as the common denominator of the two fractions. All right, let's see if you can do that one on your own. Pause and see what you can do. So sometimes people say, do I have to do a formize only column? No, but then just make sure you're writing it carefully. So I'm looking at the denominators here, a to the fifth, b to the second, and b to the third. So I'm going to need b to the third, c squared I'm going to need, and 7 I'm going to need. So least common multiple is that. So I'm going to write equal to here and multiply the missing terms on top and bottom here. See if you understand why that happened. A to the fifth is all there. B squared is there. We need B to the third for the least common multiple, so we need another extra B. Seven, we are missing, so we need seven. And C squared is missing, so we need seven B C squared, top and bottom. What about here? Seven is already there. B cubed is already there. C squared is already there. A to the fifth is what's missing. So numerator, denominator have A to the fifth and then just combine like terms, if there are any. So we have 7, c to the third times c to the second is c to the fifth. Remember why? 3 c's and 2 c's multiply to give you 5 c's. So c to the fifth, that's the exponent notation. So you can see how if you are weaker in exponents, then it will come back to haunt you here. If that is the case, go back to the previous lectures and review exponents before doing these problems. And then a to the second, a to the second, and a to the fifth will give you a to the seventh. All right, do that one on your own now. Pause the video here. Are you pausing? All right, let's do common multiple first so that we can get a common denominator. 3 and 5, so 3 times 5, 15. b to the fifth, and c to the 12th and d to the 3rd. That's what we need. So we have what? We have 3 here, so we need a 5. b to the 5th is already there. d to the 3rd is already there. c to the 12th is missing. So 5c to the 12th is what we need here. We already have the 5, so we need the 3, so we can have 15. So 3, we have b to the 3rd, but we need b to the 5th, so we need two extra b's and d to the 3rd. So we need d to the third, OK? And then multiply. So this is 2 times 5, 10. a to the third, c to the 12th. 4 times 3 is 12, a squared, b squared, d cubed. There's nothing we can do to simplify these. All right, try that on your own now. Again, for my eyes, only column will help you write a little better so that you're not making any mistakes. Least common multiple of x plus 1, x minus 2, x minus 2, x minus 1. So what do you think? We need x plus 1, we need x minus 2, and it's power of 1, so we just have to keep 1, and we need x minus 1. So our least common multiple is going to be x minus 1, x minus 2, x plus 1. We have x plus 1 and x minus 2 in that first fraction. So for this fraction, we need to multiply numerator denominator by x minus 1. Here we need to multiply numerator denominator by x plus 1. 
because that's what's missing. So now they both have common denominator because we used least common multiple of these two uh, factors here in order to get common denominator. Now you know what to do because it's the same as what we've been doing for many, many problems prior to now. So term by term multiplication, what property is that? Good. Distributive property of multiplication over addition. All right, let's take a look. 5x times x is 5x squared. 5x times negative 1 is negative 5x. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x. Or negative x, you can write negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. What about here? 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 1 is plus 3x. Now we add like terms. So we're going to have uh, this negative needs to make sure you take care of this negative. This negative belongs to all of these terms in here. Don't forget that. So we have 5x squared minus 3x squared, which will give me 2x squared. Negative 5x and minus x, that's negative 6x minus 3x. So what do that give you? Negative 6x minus 3x. That will give you negative 9x, and then a plus 1. We'll stay plus 1, so that's your final answer. Look very carefully at each of these steps and see how least common multiple helped you solve this problem. All right, try these on your own, all 13 of them.